A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. And you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, Whose image is this, and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. At that he said to them, Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. People who claim to experience no conflict between their citizenship and their baptism have either never reflected on all the actions of their government or never understood the meaning of baptism. I am the Lord, and there is no other. We have been raised with the value of the separation of church and state. There are many viewpoints regarding this American value. Some despise it, pointing to our founding history where the idea arose to protect religion from the state. But many now find that ideal perverted and reversed, claiming the value exists to protect the state from religion. Some hail the value saying that it protects minority religions and helps establish a sense of religious toleration. Others say it makes the state intolerant of religion. While debate continues, my friends, we must appreciate the fact that this value is definitely not held in most other places. In the Middle East, for example, there is absolutely no concept of separation of church and state. The same was true in Jesus' day. No one conceived of a separation of church and state. Official Roman religion revolved around emperor worship. The religion and government of Judah revolved around the Lord, the God of Israel. It is no wonder that there was always a clash between Rome and Judah. It was destined to remain violent and bloody. Last Sunday we listened to a story of Jesus in which a king invited all the important and wealthy of the kingdom to a wedding feast. They all refused to attend, and as Jesus tells the story, the king destroyed them and invited others to the feast. The story was pointed toward the Pharisees, and they were livid. In fact, they were so angry that in today's Gospel, which immediately follows last Sunday's, they plot to destroy Jesus. For the next four weeks, we will read of increasing efforts to destroy Jesus, only to discover eventually that not only can Jesus never be destroyed, but also that he will instead become ruler over everything. The Pharisees were enemies of the Herodians. The Pharisees saw the Law and the Prophets, meaning God's Word, as the supreme authority. The Herodians did not necessarily disagree, but they were Roman sympathizers who supported Roman rule. The only possible thing that could unite these two groups was their disdain for Jesus. They used their own differences to lay a trap. Rome had a head tax. Every single man, woman, and child had to contribute one day's wages to Rome each year as one of Rome's taxes. The coin Rome used for the tax was called a denarius, which bore the image of the Emperor Tiberius and an inscription proclaiming his divine status. The Pharisees bitterly opposed the tax, not because it was a tax, but because it required Jews 
to use the coin which proclaimed someone other than the Lord as God. Simply possessing the coin was considered to be an act of idolatry. The Herodians, on the other hand, supported the tax. If Jesus had opposed the tax, the Herodians would have persecuted him. If Jesus had supported the tax, the Pharisees would have won because his support would have immediately discredited him in the eyes of all his followers. Jesus' response moved the discussion to an entirely different level. He avoided taking sides by saying that we have a debt to God that must be paid, implying that neither the Pharisees nor the Herodians were doing that. If we proclaim ourselves to be followers of Jesus Christ, then everything we do, say, and think must somehow be governed by our relationship with God. As Christians, we cannot separate our faith from our citizenship. We do not live within two different worlds. We cannot serve God and humankind. We can only serve one. Isaiah's words give God a voice. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Christians are not to be anti-government. In point of fact, as governments exist to care for the welfare of its citizens, we are obligated to support the government. But when governmental values or laws conflict with our Christian values, we must always side with God's kingdom, not humankind's. St. Paul took this stance, and the government in Thessalonica forced Paul to leave the small Christian community he had founded. His letter today compliments them for keeping faithful despite governmental harassment. My sisters and brothers, the Feast of Christ the King is five weeks away. This feast brings to a close our liturgical year. When the kingdom ultimately arrives, will God be able to tell which kingdom we have been serving? As troubadours, for God's kingdom, may the Lord give you peace.